If your bike has hydraulic disc brakes, then over time the brakes can start to feel spongy. This can be because of air ingressing into the system, but also water and dirt as well. And the hydraulic fluid just generally wears out over time. It's a bit like having to periodically change the oil in your car. And so in this video, we're going to show you how to bleed Shimano hydraulic brakes so that they get working again nice and sharp. The tools that you'll need for this job are some Shimano hydraulic mineral oil to uh, replace the used stuff, a Shimano disc brake bleed kit, you can buy this from most bike shops, and then you'll also need a piston spacer, and if you've got a newer Shimano hydraulic group set, you'll need this little adapter as well to make the bleed kit uh, fit onto it. This usually comes with most bikes when you buy them new, but if not, you can buy these too. You'll also need a 7mm spanner, a 2mm Allen key or hex key, a small flathead screwdriver, and then something to space the pads apart. You can either use a specific pad spacer tool, like this one from Park Tool, or you can use a large flathead screwdriver if you don't have one of those. Now today we're going to be bleeding the front brake, and because this procedure relies on gravity, it's good to have the bike in the stand as it is here, angled slightly down, as this does stop the, uh, the steerer moving around unnecessarily, having it angled in this way. If we were working on the rear brake, we'd want to angle the bike upwards with the rear wheel down a bit, and maybe use something to secure the bars to stop them wobbling around. Now the first step is to remove your front wheel. We're now going to reset the pistons, and I'm going to use this specific tool. But as I said, if you don't have this tool and you're just using a flathead screwdriver, you can use that, but just be careful, be gentle, because you don't want to go in too hard and gouge the brake pads as you can damage them. With the pistons reset, we're now going to remove the brake pads themselves. First by removing the little clip on the right hand side and then by undoing the little retaining rod with the flathead screwdriver that's on the left. When you take your pads out, it's a good opportunity to inspect them and see if you need new ones. And personally, if you're going to the trouble of bleeding your disc brakes, I would say it's worth changing your pads and putting some fresh ones on. And this is because it makes life a bit easier down the line. When you actually then refit the system and have it ready again, the pads are auto spaced uh, with at their maximum with the pistons reset. So this means that when you first apply the brakes, the pads close in and that takes fluid from the system. And then that can mean that you have to burp the system in order to not have an air bubble at the top um, as the pads then recenter and get closer onto the disc brake caliper. So basically, if you know anything for an easy life, I would say change your pads at the same time as well. You're next going to insert your bleed block into the caliper and you do it as follows. This end goes at the top and then you can use the retaining pin that you removed to hold it in place. The next step is to peel back the shifter hood and then before we start opening up the system and also getting the mineral oil out, it's important to point out that, well, you should really wear gloves for this job. You don't want to get the mineral oil on your hands, it's not particularly nice. And it can also damage rubber as well. So it's a good idea to try and protect your shifter hood, maybe with a bit of blue roll or something on there. And just in general, this isn't a job that I would suggest you perform in your mum's living room on her best carpet. She's not gonna be pleased, trust me. I learned the hard way. We're now gonna undo the bleed port screw on the shifter. Now, it's quite easy to round these out, so make sure that you use the correct end of your Allen key, not this end, this end. If you're using an older version uh, Shimano hydraulic brake, you might not require this bit, but mine's the latest Shimano, so I'm gonna use the bleed port adapter, which you just screw into the top of the bleed port like this. From your bleed kit, then take the fluid reservoir and screw that into the top of the adapter or bleed port. 
So I've now got my syringe with the hydraulic mineral fluid in it, and I'm going to attach that to the bleed port on the brake caliper. Now you will notice that the syringe says for single use only, and that's because the mineral oil can interfere with some rubber compounds. That's for the same reason why I've taken the effort to try and protect the shifter hood. It's not like super corrosive, but it's just something to be aware of. And you'll find that once you've used your syringe, if you then leave it in your toolbox for you know several weeks, then over time that rubber uh, nozzle on the syringe, well, the, the, the piston, it can expand, meaning that the syringe is then unusable and becomes very stiff. So there's, there's usually a little dust port on the uh, bleed port nozzle here, so just take off the little rubber dust cover and then attach on your hose. You can then use this part of the Shimano syringe to kind of like hold the hose in place by pushing that on. If you do get mineral oil anywhere, then don't worry, it's water soluble, so it's quite easy to clean up. You then take your 7mm spanner and we will undo the bleed port. Now going to remove the pin out of the bucket or reservoir, and this will open up the system. I'm now going to depress the syringe, and this will cause the fluid to move through the syringe, through the pipe, up through the system, and into the bucket. And into the bucket is where we're going to collect the old fluid as the new fluid pushes it through. Now, when you depress the syringe, don't push it too hard, as well, this can cause problems and cause it to leak in various places. So you just want to be nice and gentle with it. Now, as we depress the cylinder, this is where we're also using gravity to remove air from the system. Air is obviously less dense than the mineral hydraulic fluid, and so it rises to the top and comes out of the reservoir. If we were to try and bleed the rear brake as the bike is currently positioned in the stand, you'll see that the, well, the pistons here and the caliper is at not the lowest point um, in relation to the rest of the system. The lowest point in the system would be down here. So what you could do is have a situation where you've still got oxy well air bubbles trapped in the caliper, and so you're not properly bleeding the system and removing that air, which can make your brakes spongy. And as I depress the syringe, you can see the air bubbles coming out of the system uh, and into the reservoir as well. Cool. Next, we're going to tighten up the bleed port bolt again using the 7mm uh, spanner. So clockwise this time. So top tip, with the bleed port closed, if you just use one hand to pull back on the syringe like that and then remove the hose, it stops fluid getting everywhere. Now before you put the dust cap back in place, just get a bit of uh, blue roll or tissue and just clean the port and remove any excess fluid because any fluid that's left there can potentially contaminate your pads. And while you're there, it's a good idea to just give the surroundings of the caliper a clean and a wipe down as well. These areas are quite fiddly and quite difficult to get to ordinarily, so with a few parts removed like the wheel, the disc and the pads, you can get rid of and just wipe off all that sort of black brake dust that builds up over time. Right, before we go to the next bit, special bonus tip. Uh, if you take your syringe, the hose on the syringe is actually the same, well, the right diameter to fit into the hose, into the, well, the port at the bottom of the reservoir. So if you take that in and stick it in there, what you can do is then pull on the syringe and it will make sure that any air that's still in the shifter or around here will be sucked up and out of the system. And this will help make your brakes really tight and uh, feel really sharp. Now I'm happy that there's no air bubbles in the system. I'm going to put the little stopper pin, plunger, whatever you want to call it, into the uh, reservoir on the top. That seals the system and closes it. I'm then going to draw up the fluid that's remaining in the reservoir into the syringe as uh, this just helps keep it out of the way and then just means when you do remove the reservoir, it's uh, less likely to spill any and create a mess. Now at this point we're going to remove the reservoir. If you're using a reservoir and an adapter, the better technique is to remove it from the adapter at the bottom. And you might find it's a little bit stuck on, in which case you can use a 9mm spanner if you need to. Now I'm going to replace the bleed port and put that back in place with the 2mm Allen key. As before, remember not to over tighten this, it's quite easy to round these out. 
I'm now just going to use the rag that I've got here or the blue roll, whatever you use, just to wipe off any excess mineral oil, clean up the area, then pull that out and put the uh, hood back into place as we're done with that area. Now I'm also going to remove my gloves now because they might have a bit of oil on them, a bit of contamination because I'm going to be touching the brake blocks and I don't want to contaminate my brake blocks. So I'm now going to install my new pads. So the first thing is to pull out the little retaining bolt, take out the pad or well, the piston block, put that to one side. And as I said, the reason why I'm going to put in new pads is because when you reset the pistons, it can then mean that when you put in your old pads, they're not quite in the same position and the wear rate on the different pads might have been different when they were the pistons were set up before. So one side might have worn a bit more than, than the other and resetting the pistons will then change that once they're back in. Also, having just topped up the system with hydraulic fluid, if the pads are heavily worn, when you compress the pads back together by pulling the brake lever, that's then going to create a gap in the system. So the brakes aren't going to be as sharp if you just put new pads in. So new pads is what I'm going to do. My pads are pretty worn to be fair. One thing to pay attention to is that the pads are left and right specific. So make sure that you put them in the corresponding side. It should fit only in uh, the right way because they're asymmetric. Uh, and then you want to put in the retaining a bolt or peg in there. Take your flathead screwdriver, screw that back into place. Now I'm going to put the wheel back in place, but do not pull on the brake lever just yet. With the caliper now a little bit loose, you can see it just moves slightly, just playing it. I'm now going to pull the lever and that should center it. And then with my hand on the lever holding the caliper pressed against the disc. I'm now going to knit back up these bolts uh, to tighten the caliper in place. Now once you've done that and tightened your caliper back up, your wheel should spin nicely like that and not rub on the rotor. If your rotor is rubbing on the caliper, then you might need to repeat the process and just loosen the caliper and recenter it again to get it spot on. And in terms of how many times or how often you should be bleeding your hydraulic disc brakes, well, it's a bit like how long is a piece of string. It depends on where you ride and the conditions that you ride in and how often you ride. But the best thing to do is to go off the feel of your brakes. If your brakes start to feel spongy, there's a good chance you need to bleed your brakes. And I hope you found this video useful and it's shown you how to do this. And if you have found it useful, then please give it a thumbs up as it helps support the channel and the content we make. And for more maintenance videos, subscribe to the GCN Tech channel and I'll see you in the next one.